grace and peace be multiplied unto you tonight. I am excited. It's Thursday night and I hope and pray you had a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. You're getting yourself ready for Friday, Saturday, getting yourself ready for a powerful, explosive weekend. Of course, those at NOLCC, I hope you are getting yourself prepared, getting your mind ready as we continually open up the word of God, even on tonight. I want those of you that are watching, let's move swiftly. We only have about 30 minutes. I don't know. Uh, this stuff is so good. Sometimes I want to expand the time because, again, this is a day of exposure and expansion. But let's move quickly tonight. I'm asking the phone tree people. Come on, phone tree people. Let's do your job. Let's text somebody. Call them. Come on. Don't be scared. Don't let them think that you are annoying them. You're trying to help your brother and sister. You are your brother's keeper. And so it's important that you come on, text those people, call those people and make sure you yourself are watching it. Then let's get into this word tonight and let's let God open up our hearts, open up our understanding. Shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy. I hope Cedric Wooten, I hope you're watching. Thank God that Ladorius Leonard and uh, Cynthia Wilkins, y'all are so faithful in watching the program along with many, many other members of NOLCC, Prophetess Fleming, Sister Brentson, Teresa Johnson, Sister Glenda. Thank y'all so much. Amen. For uh, Sister Marilyn Smith, Sister Jean Drone. Amen. Sister Elizabeth. Thank God for some of those that are just so faithful. And that encourages my heart to know that you love what I love. It's very important that people love what you love. If you love the word, you want to be around others who love the word also. Shout out to Tanya Gallette. Way to go, Tanya. All the way in New Jersey. Amen. Watching the program. We appreciate that. Amen. So it's Patricia Burton, who's faithful. Thank God for faithful listeners. You know, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the 28th chapter, I believe it is in verse 20. The Bible talks about a faithful man shall abound in blessings. And that's what you want. You want the blessings of God. And God told me tonight, he said, those that have been watching you faithfully pronounce some blessings on them. Pronounce some speedy things that happen for them because they are encouraging your heart. And I, I said, God, but you haven't spoken. To he said, no, I'm giving you the power to release some speedy blessings and some speedy opportunities to them because of their faithful viewing. Mm -hmm. So those of you who I called out, who are faithful, who've been watching us faithfully, I pronounce over your life profound blessings. I pronounce over your life the supernatural breakthrough. I pronounce over your life some things that happen for you supernaturally and speedily in the name of the Lord. I pronounce over you like the prophet Elijah did when he found out what that woman needed. And the servant says she needs a child with well, what God told me to pronounce over your life because you have encouraged me. It's encouraging to know that when I go back and look at the program that you all are up there and that you all are letting me know you're watching. And so tonight I pronounce over you. Get that thing over your heart. Even if you can call the name out. Huh? Even if you can mention the name. Oh, I, I've been watching who's been up there faithfully. And a lot of those that I'm, I'm calling out there. Amen. Uh, yeah, I said Sister Linda. Amen. Prophetess Fleming. Sister Glenda. Teresa. Patricia Burton. Amen. Uh, Sister Bellamy. Amen. Uh, Ladorius Leonard. Cynthia Wilkins. Amen. Many of you. Amen. That watch us faithfully. Amen. God said to me to do for you what he did for the prophet Elijah. Elijah found out that the woman wanted a child. So I want you to get on your heart tonight. The thing that you truly, truly want, that thing that you truly, truly desire. And tonight I pronounce over your life that it will happen. I pronounce over your life. 
it will be done in Jesus name. I speak it over Cynthia Wilkins life. I speak it over Doris Leonard life. I speak it over uh, Sister Glenda's life, over Teresa's Teresa life. Sister Marilyn's life. Amen. I speak it over you, Sister Marilyn Smith. You'll get it. I speak it over. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Prophetess Fleming, those that are watching, Sister Jean Drone, those that are watching us faithfully and making those comments, I speak over your life in Jesus' name that it's done in Jesus' name. I speak it over Vanika, my daughter. Amen. Who's one of those faithful watchers. Amen. See, see, some of you. You, 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 you don't put your name up there. You know, you watch it, but you don't put your name Well, you missed it tonight. I'm speaking life over those because God said they are the ones who are encouraging you. And I release you tonight. I, I mean, I was in my house minding my own business. God said, I release you tonight. To speak over them what they desire to command it to come forth. In Jesus name, I have given you that authority as a prophet of God to do that. And that's what Elijah did. He spoke and found that woman needed a child. (laughs) Glory to God. Yeah. And Mother Whitaker. Yeah. And Mother Doris. I speak over Mother Whitaker and Mother Doris, a release of divine favor, a release of a broke, a broken Glory to God. Broken chains, broken barriers, everything that's holding back money from them, victory from them. I break it tonight in the Tata Koba, in the authority of Jesus name. I release the glory of God over you in Jesus name. Vincent Bellamy and your wife, I speak it over you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Curtis Bryant. Amen. I speak over you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, glory, supernatural abundance, supernatural favor. Oh, my God. I feel this thing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. See, some of you, you inconsistent. You watch us maybe Tuesday, Miss Thursday. You don't put your name up there. We don't know that. Amen. All we ask that you would do to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button. Amen. And then sometime I make it easy for you because I'll make a comment and I'll say, Put up there this, this, this. Amen. To give you an opportunity to put your stuff up there. Don't be afraid. The Bible said I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. And inconsistency, inconsistency destroys the work of God. The thing that moves the work of God forward is consistency and faithfulness. And if you've been faithful over those things that are few, you can really get faith over that, which is many, because I prophesy many things over you tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Now, shout out to all those February people. We're in the month of February tonight. And uh, this is Black History Month. Of course, the heathen has a day called uh, Valentine Day. Amen. And of course, amen. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of almost like with the Joe witness that don't get entrapped by these things because a lot of times we get uh, depressed over these things because we feel like I ain't got nobody and all this stuff. And it's that it, we have to understand you are loved by God, that God's banner over you is love. It's just like Christmas. Amen. A lot of people get caught up in that trap. Well, ain't nobody give me nothing for Christmas. Well, you are loved by God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we believe that every day, You ought to feel the love of God coming your way. People should be loving you every single day, honoring you every single day. And therefore, amen, it's no big deal when those things happen. Glory. See what I'm saying? (laughs) Just right then, amen, got a testimony where a person was out. And while they were out, amen, my daughter, who I just prophesied over, just spoke her name and everything. Amen. A person just walked up. Uh, to my grandson and gave them some money. You see what I'm saying? You better hear the prophet tonight. Take this thing serious. God is speaking profoundly and he spoke it to me today. He said, those that have been watching you, see, because I'm not up here to do my own thing. I'm not just up here to have a show. I'm not just up here, amen, because it's a, it's a place to talk and rattle off at the mouth. There are people who who want that, but I'm up here on divine assignment, 
I'm up here because God told me when to go on, what time to go on. Amen. And I'm up here talking to you tonight from a program called Sharp Points where iron sharpeneth iron. I speak also a blessing over many Bullock. She also watches us faithfully. I speak a blessing over you, many Bullock. I speak increase over you in the name of Jesus Christ, as well as uh, uh, speak a blessing over uh, Sister Demetrius tonight. I speak favor over you, increase over you tonight, breakthrough over you tonight in the name of Jesus and I also speak uh, blessings over, uh, what's her name? What's the lady name? Oh, my God. Uh-uh. Oh, I got a face. Uh -uh. Um, uh, Brother Yance's daughter. Oh, uh, Jacqueline. Yeah, Minister Jacqueline. Mitchell. Uh, Mitchell, I speak blessings over you. I speak increase over you. I speak favor over you, supernatural opportunities coming your way. I speak finances over you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. All right. Shante White, I speak blessings over you, favor over you as well. Increase over you in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. All right. If they are they watching continually. Now, again, I'm talking this for those who watching continually, not those who just up here tonight. Thank God you're up here tonight. But I'm looking for the encouragement come when I can look up there. And see you're typing in what the Holy Ghost saying that you're hearing the word of God. See, come remember, if we were not on this platform, we would be in the house of God expected to be there to get fed the word of God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to say a happy birthday to Elder Marvin White tonight. The day is Elder Marvin White's birthday. And, I, and I'm telling you. I know that he watches us faithfully as well. So I speak bountiful blessings over you, sir. I command the blessing of the Lord to come on you in a supernatural way that you will have stuff paid off supernaturally, that you will see increase in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. See, some of y'all coming up here tonight that ain't been seeing y'all name. I'm trying to give you what God gave me now. Amen. Because I, my wife can tell you, I go back and I listen and I watch the word of God because gosh, and I didn't even know that God was going to do this. But he did it to me today. He spoke to me. I was in my bedroom, walking in my bedroom, got through looking at scriptures and everything. And God said, those that are committed to this. See, this thing ain't for jumping in and jumping out. It is for the committed ones. Those who I see up there making the comments. When I say, type in, you're going to be blessed. Or type in this right. I see it. I speak a blessing over, over Pastor Reese Because she here faithfully and committed. I speak multiplication. Something getting ready to happen. Somebody getting ready to walk up to us and, and give us the best that life has to offer. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak it over you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sister Teresa who helps out faithfully. And many of you. Amen. This is real. This is real to me. Amen. I'm supposed to be going on t talking, but uh, teaching this word tonight. But I I I'm talking about wealth transfer and wealth creator. And this, this relates right to it. Sometimes you get wealthy by blessing the prophet. Glory to God. Read your Bible. The Bible said that woman, she had a table for him. She had light for him. She had a chair for him. Hallelujah. And every time when she, this man passed by, she told her husband, we need to make a room for him because I perceive that he is a prophet. I perceive that he's a prophet. What the job of a prophet is to help you push forward, to point you toward God. To cause you to love God, honor God, be blessed by God in a sauce. I speak, I speak a blessing over you, Marcus Johnson, over you, Monique Brown, over y'all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. Let me get into this word here tonight. Now, don't forget, this is the month of February. Therefore, the scripture has changed. We're looking at Psalm 105 and verse 24 this whole month. When you get up in the morning, 
Look at Psalm 105, verse 24. And before you go to bed at night, Psalm 105, verse 24, that says he increases people greatly and he made them stronger than their enemies. One translation say he made them more powerful than their enemies. He made them what? More powerful than their enemies. Amen. So God is a God who wants us to multiply, be fruitful, multiply. And I speak multiplication over all of those whose name I call out. I speak multiplication. It's going to happen supernaturally. God would not have told me that if it were not for you tonight. So get ready for it. Watch it manifest itself. And be able to give me the testimony. Glory to God in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, that's how the word of the Lord does. I wrote a book called uh, Let the Prophet Speak. And, and, and see, the prophetic is, is, is nothing we control. God is the one who brings a word of the Lord. But then there are times when God releases a prophet. Because of the way people are blessing him, because of the encouragement that he's getting, because one of the things that a prophet needs is that encouragement through even when when uh, the prophet will ask for a minstrel, bring me a minstrel, someone who can play skillfully, because the prophet had to be in that right mood, that right frame of mind to release the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, glory to God. Hallelujah. God is releasing some stuff tonight for his people and I ain't even got into this message tonight. Hallelujah. But some people, they missed out on it. They missed it. They missed it. I told, I've been, I preached a message about a visitation when, uh, during a revival and God is a God of visitation and God will visit his people. Remember Ruth and Naomi, the story of Naomi went down there, left Bethlehem, Judah, because it looked bad in Bethlehem, Judah, but God visited Bethlehem, Judah. And when that visitation came, glory to God. I said, when that visitation came, they had to get back down there, amen, and get that blessing because God visited Bethlehem, Judah. And see, you and I don't control the visitation of God. God does. And when God decides to visit his people like he did tonight, Glory to God. Handako Baba. People that were not in place, people that were not watching tonight end up missing out on something that you're going to have and you're going to receive in the name of the Lord. All right. Handada Baba Bakusha. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Now, let me go into this teaching tonight. We're talking about uh, wealth transfer and wealth creator. God wants us to see a transfer of this wealth because he's making us by the spirit of God, wealth creators. God. Uh huh. Yeah. Shout out to those of you that are tuning in now. Thank God you're tuning in. But I'm looking for consistency. And I want to I want to give this prophetic word to those that I see up there on a regular basis. See, because anything to make anything happen. Great. you got to have the faithful. You got to have the faithful. When we, when we at newness of life, we used to have our Bible study. There would be faithful people that we knew were coming to Bible study. Amen. My mother, Sister Demetrius, mother, brother Wade, Deacon Gaskin, Teresa, all those people that were Sister Marilyn, Sister Linda, all those people that we had. You always have faithful people. So you can't do it without those that are faithful. And so faithful people inspire those of us who are committed to the work of God. The Bible said confidence in an unfaithful man is like a tooth, a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. You want to put your confidence in the faithful. So I speak life over the faithful tonight. You're going to have what the Lord said. And again, things that you want and desire. God told me to tell you, you ask him for it. You're going to receive it in Jesus name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That woman desired a child. She thought the man of God was lying to her. He said, come on up here. By this time next year, you're going to have a child. She said, oh, don't play with me, man. Why am I playing with her? He knew that he had the power in his mouth 
because of the way he had been treated by this woman to speak that child into existence, to call forth things that were not as though they were. Glory to God. And I call it forth over you tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Now, let me go into this wealth transfer and wealth creator. Acts 17 and verse 28 says, for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. We are the offspring of God. Let me read this to you in the Passion Translation. It says it is through him that we live and function. And have our identity. I told you in a message before about teaching about your identity that we fight, we function and we flow out of our identity, out of who we are. Just as our as your own poets have said, our lineage comes from him. So God is the God who owns everything. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, let's go to Colossians 2 and 3. It's, excuse me, it says, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. What are hid? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Glory. Hallelujah. Now, let me read this to you in the Passion Translation. Colossians 2 and 3 says, for our spiritual wealth is in him. Like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered, heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge. The endless riches of revelation knowledge. They're where hid in Christ, our spiritual wealth. Now, remember, everything natural has been birthed and born out of the spiritual world. It is the spiritual realm that gives birth and gave birth to the natural realm. God said that's spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. That's why it lives and abides forever. So the word of God is alive, is powerful, sharpening any two edged sword and we live by it. So our spiritual wealth as wealth creators it's going to cause a transfer to happen. Hallelujah. I speak life also over Sister Lisa Rayner. She watches faithfully. Amen. Even when she can't be here on the place, she'll text us and let us know she had to see it later on that night. I speak, I speak prosperity and victory over you, Pastor Lisa. In the name of Jesus, fresh fire, fresh favor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, James two and five. I feel the prophetic tonight. Whoa, ba 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 kosha. James two and five says, hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world? They're rich in faith. So what are we rich in faith? God does not start us out naturally rich. He starts us out rich in faith, but not rich in the natural because he knows that he Owns the world. He owns the silver. Watch this. Have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that love him. So those of us who are in the kingdom, we have spiritual wealth, which we create for us natural wealth. Watch Colossians 316 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. How the word need to dwell in us richly so we can speak the word and create so we can speak the word and see power manifest deliverance manifest breakthrough manifest. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in our wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So we admonish each other through a psalm. Through a hymn, through a spiritual song. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We must never allow our external or material world dominate our internal or spiritual world. Please catch that statement. Never allow our external or material world to dominate 
our internal or spiritual world. In other words, we don't allow how it looks, how it feels to get us down, to get us feeling sad because we are dominated by what's going on on the inside rather than what's going on on the outside. Psalm 112 verses 1, 2, and 3 says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Look at verse 3, Psalm 112 verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. What's going to be in this person's house? Wealth and riches. How did it get there? By God bringing it there. God took David from being a slave and made him king. God took Joseph and made him in charge, raised him up. So God has always done this and brings us into a place of wealth where we can look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the waters would have overflooded me. The fire would have killed against me. See, God's wealth is going to be transferred to his people in this hour like never before. That's why you're hearing bad news on CNN and these other stations about gas price and all this stuff. But don't let that move you because it's a transfer going on and you are a wealth creator. You have power on the inside and you have power in your mouth to speak life and to speak victory and to speak hope and to speak breakthrough and to speak increase. Come on, type that in right now. Say, I speak increase over my life. I speak increase over my life. I speak increase over my life. Yeah. Watch this now. Psalm 105 and verse 37. Psalm 105 and verse number 37 says, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Oh, my goodness. Did you see what God brought them forth with? Silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Wait a minute. God took care of all the nation of Israel. All of them. He brought them forth. Not one of them, all of them fought with silver and gold. All of them had increase. All of them had a wealth transfer. Where did they get it from? The Egyptians. It transferred from the Egyptians and all of the nation of Israel had it. Who gave it to them? God did it. See, God wants you to know that he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Come on, type that in real quick. God is going to do it. Who's going to do it? God is going to do it. Who's going to give you the silver and gold? God is going to do it. Look at Haggai chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. Haggai chapter 2, verses 7 and 8 says, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill. This house, that's you and me, plus the house of God, with glory, said the Lord of hosts. Why? Listen to that, got 2 and 8. The silver is mine. Oh, who does the silver belong to? God. And the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. Who does the silver belong to? God. Who does the gold belong to? God. And God said, wait a minute. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fill my house with glory, with splendor, with increase, with abundance, with more than enough. Because the silver belongs to me. The gold belongs to me. Now look at Proverbs 13, verses 21 and 22 in the Amplified. It says, evil pursues sinners, but the consistently upright. That's what we're trying to get you to do. Be consistent. Be faithful. Consistently upright and in right standing with God is recompensed with good. Who's going to be recompensed with good? The person who's consistent. A good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. And the wealth 
of the sinner, the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up. So it's been laid up for us, y'all. The wealth been laid up for us. I told you the other time, the mall was laid up for Bill Winston. That, that big uh, stadium was laid up there. Glory to God for Joel Osteen. Glory to God. There's land that's, that was laid up in Tarboro for us. There's things that, that were laid up. Other people was on it, but it was ours all the time. God transferred it to us and made it ours. So it's happening because you are a wealth creator. All right, watch this now. Ephesians 4, 1, 2, and 3 says, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. How should we walk? With lowliness and meekness. See, their pride going to cause it to be switched to you because you're walking in lowliness you're walking in meekness and long, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. See, that's what I'm bring it to you. Your lowliness, your meekness, your love walk. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Come on, your love walk. Look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. See, these inward things help you and I to be kind to people. They help you and I to compliment others and collaborate with others. See, these are times for you and I to be very, very complimentary. People are discouraged. People are having tough days on their job, tough, tough days in their home. Think about it. Even today, a congresswoman got shot to death right in front of a house. Man, we're, we're, we're in days that are perilous. People need compliments. People need to be treated with kindness. People need refreshing. And you and I have that. We have a smile that can light up a room. We have a joy on the inside and a peace on the inside and gentleness on the inside and meekness on the inside that needs to be exposed to people. So when people talk to us, we are gentle with them. We're loving with them. We're kind to them. And all of a sudden, they begin to want to do something for us. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, 5, I mean 15 through 16. All right. All right. And then I'm going to read all the way through Ecclesiastes uh, 2, 26. And I'll just stop. All right. I went over because the prophetic was so strong on me tonight and it took up some of my time here. All right. Colossians 3, 15 and 16 says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which also you are called in one body and be ye thankful. Are you thankful? See, being thankful is a magnet. It draws things to you. It causes stuff to happen. Complaining repels stuff. It moves stuff away from you. So you need to be thankful in this time. Be thankful and watch. That creates wealth. Being thankful creates wealth. Mm, did you hear that? Being thankful creates wealth. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. All right, Ecclesiastes 2 and 26. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 2 and 26 now. This is powerful verse. It, it connects similar to uh, Proverbs 13, 21 and 22. But look at this. Ecclesiastes 2 and 26 says, for God give it. God given to a man that is good in his sight. What is he given? Wisdom. What else? Knowledge. What else? And joy. See, before he ever give you money, he wants to give you wisdom because you get money before you get wisdom. You're going to mess up the money. If you get money before you get knowledge, you're going to mess up the money. If you get money before you get joy, you're going to be trying to get rid of your depression through buying bad stuff. 
buying wrong stuff. Some people, when they get depressed, what they do, they go shopping. Wrong time to go shopping. Ain't time to go shopping when you sad. Ain't time to go shopping trying to get lifted up by buying stuff because you'll get in debt that way and you'll waste money that way. God wants to give you first wisdom, give you knowledge and give you joy. And that way, when you go to shopping, when you're joyful, certain things you won't try to buy to, to create joy for you. You will buy that that is necessary and you will buy that that adds to the pleasure you already have. That's different than a person sad. Something is going wrong and horrible in their life. And they say, well, I need to go shopping. Mm -mm -mm. You're going to run that credit card up. You're going to have yourself in so much debt. You ain't going to know what to do because you're trying to get something from the outside that only God can give to the inside. <laughs> Woo! Did you hear what I said? You're trying to get something from the outside that only God can give to the inside. You want, <laughs> glory to God, to be full of joy, full of knowledge, full of wisdom. Watch what he said. To the sinner, he give it travail to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now notice who's talking here. The preacher is talking here. Who's talking here? Solomon is talking. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that share button. Hit that subscribe button. And listen at this. And if anybody knows what the heart of God is concerning this kind of stuff, it's Solomon. Because Solomon was one of the wealthiest men that the world has ever known. This guy had people bringing him stuff by the day. But what did he have? He had wisdom. What else did he have? Have knowledge. What else did he have? Joy. And he says there are people who are heaping up stuff to be given to the person that's good. Oh, I can't tell you. Amen. Over and over again. I remember uh, years ago, my brother and his wife, they were looking for a specific thing to go with their new home and stuff. And uh, a person was moving out and, and had the exact color, the exact number of chairs and stuff to go with the new house that he had just bought. They were it was brand new stuff. Amen. And then my wife and I got blessed with some brand new stuff as well. Like the sinner had just heaped it up for us to get it. That's what God is saying. Watch this now in the ERV. Listen at the ERV. It says, if people do good and please God, he will give them wisdom, knowledge, and joy. But those who sin will get only the work of gathering and carrying things. God takes from the bad person and gives to the good person. Mm -mm -mm. But all this work is useless. It is like trying to catch the wind. God takes from the bad person, the wicked person, the corrupt person, the proud person, the arrogant person and gives to the humble person, the meek person, the loving person, the kind person, the gentle person. Oh, glory. There's some, I shall take over. There's some people that's in front of you right now that the spirit of God is telling me you get ready to surpass. Mm -hmm. I preached a message about a man that God will make the last first. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Oh, look at Ecclesiastes 2 and uh, 26 in the NIV. In the NIV, it says to the person who pleases him. That's God. God gives wisdom and knowledge and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering it and storing up wealth to hand it over to the one who pleases God. Oh, you see that? People are storing up stuff right now to be handed over to the person who pleases God. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Now let's go to it in the good word, uh, God, uh, God's word translation. Because that's the 226 in God's word translation. God gives wisdom, knowledge and joy to anyone who pleases him. But to the person who continues to sin, he gives the job of gathering and collecting wealth. 
They gather and collecting wealth for you right now. Mm -hmm. The sinner must turn his wealth over to the person who pleases God. Even this is pointless. It is like trying to catch the wind. Mm. The sinner must turn his wealth over mm. to the person who pleases God. All right, let's go to another scripture. Ecclesiastes 2.26 in the Message Bible, it says, God may give wisdom and knowledge and joy to his favorites. Come on, type that in about yourself. Are you saved? Are you born again? I am one of God's favorites. I am one of God's favorites. I am one of God's favorites. You better type that in and look at yourself as one that God has given favor to. You one of God's favorites. Look what he said. But sinners are assigned a life of hard labor and end up turning their wages over to God's favorites. Nothing but smoke and spitting into the wind. They end up turning their hard labor, their wages and everything over to God's favorites. You got favor over your life. And because of the favor of God, some folks going to turn some stuff over to you. <laughs> Glory to God. Woo, 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 woo. Now, I told you we're talking about what? Wealth transfer and wealth creator. Now, here's a scripture that I'm going to close out with. Is found in the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter and verse 12. And we're going to pick back up. Huh? Yeah, Isaiah 58 and 12. And this is the scripture that really shares with you that you are a wealth creator. You are a wealth creator. You are a wealth creator. God's going to bless whatever your hands touch. Listen at me. Start saying that about yourself. Whatever my hands touch. It blesses it. Whatever my hand touch, it blesses it. If I touch you, you bless. Whatever my hand touch, it blesses. Wherever I go, I'm blessed. I'm blessed wherever I go. I'm blessed whatever I do. Whatever my hands touch, it blesses it. You need to put that down about yourself. Whatever my hands touch, it blesses it. Glory to God. Now watch this now. Isaiah 58 and 12 is where we're going to stop at. All right. We're talking about what? Wealth transfer and wealth creator. See, there are people that are running behind money, chasing money, and they erring from the faith because they got it backwards. God never created you to chase money. God created money to chase you. God created you to demonstrate his wisdom, his knowledge, his joy, his peace, his love. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God gave and made Abraham rich. Abraham didn't chase money. Money chased Abraham because Abraham had a covenant with God and Abraham demonstrated faith. Abraham walked by faith and not by sight. So you go to the house of God, amen, and you make sure that you don't put chasing money ahead of the house of God and you go get that word of faith so you can stay in love with people, so you can stay in joy, so you can stay gentle and kind and demonstrate that that would create wealth. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I've seen. It. I've seen it with my brother. I've seen it with me. I've seen it with my sister. I've seen it with other great men and women of God. Amen. Shout out to Pastor Vicky. Amen. Tonight. Amen. Vicki Foster, her and her husband, they seen it. They didn't go after stuff. Stuff came after them. Stuff will run you down and run you over. The goodness of God. Amen. Glory to God. It's running after. That's what C.C. Brandon said. God's goodness is running after. It's running after me. It'll chase me down and overtake me. It'll tackle me. God's goodness. And when people see you have stuff, they think you're chasing stuff. No, you're chasing being kind. You're chasing being loving. You're chasing being full of wisdom. You're chasing being full of knowledge. You're chasing the word of God. Yeah, somebody just gave us, amen, uh, some old gift cards for Panera stuff, man. We didn't, they, I mean, people call us up out in the blue. Amen. Amen. And, and then, 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 then the people at the Panera place, 
Amen. I didn't even order all that much. I mean, I ordered some stuff because I was trying to use up all these, these this stuff. But then they, the people at Panera Bread place, because I'm just talking and being kind to the waitress and the people around me. Man, I got home and they not loaded me up with some other stuff I didn't even order. That's what I'm talking about. It is part of wealth transfer. Glory to God. I'm telling you, this stuff will be transferred to us. Watch this now. Isaiah 58 and 12. I'm closing out with this. They and they is talking about the people of God and they shall be and they that be of thee. They that be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called. This is us, the people of God. What are we going to be called? The repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. We're going to restore the paths of people to live in. How are we going to do it? Because we're going to have more than enough. I said we're going to have overflow. Mm. Come on, put that in about yourself. I'm giving you some stuff to type tonight. Amen. Put that in about yourself. I shall have overflow. I shall have overflow. That's what you're going to have, overflow. Amen. Yes, I'm not just talking to be talking. I'm speaking prophetically. I'm speaking to you as a servant of God. Jesus, who was indeed a wealth creator. Who was Jesus? The word made flesh. Who was Jesus? One who was sent to bring what? Glad tidings. Who was Jesus? Full of knowledge. Who was Jesus? Full of gentleness. Who was Jesus? Full of kindness. Now watch what happened. When the people needed food, Jesus, because he was a wealth creator, Lift up what he had and he blessed and thanked the father for it. And guess what happened? It multiplied. It multiplied. Hallelujah. And then he did what? Passed it to the disciples. Gave it to the disciples and the disciples as they, they spent it out. It multiplied. It goes from the head to the beard to the skirt. It comes from, from Jesus who is the head, is the author, the finish of our faith to you and I. Wealth transfer and wealth creator. Listen, God is transferring wealth to you. Don't ever get jealous of what you see a person who's not serving God have because they could be fixing it up and making it for you. Leave it right there on the table for you. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Thank you for watching tonight. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what a move of God that's taking place here tonight. Wealth transfer and wealth creator. That's who you are. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because we serve a good, good father. And he's a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. And all of God's covenant people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, his sons, all of them experience wealth transfer. They went out with nothing and little, but they came back full and with plenty because as they will meet people. And that's why God wants you to value meeting people. Don't run from people. Some of you, you run from people. You, you get out of the presence of people. But listen at me. One of the things you must value is people. You must value people, value their feelings, value their thinking. Value people. I got it in my note. We must we must value people. We must add value to people. We must love meeting people. No, no, no. Why do you why should you love going to church? Because you're gonna meet people. You're gonna see your brothers. You're gonna see your sisters. Well, there's some mean folks in the church. There's some hateful folks in there. Yeah, but that's good exercise. That's good exercise for you. Do you not know how do you get stronger? By exercising. How does a person be a muscle? By exercising. So you need somebody to help you exercise your muscles of love, your muscle of joy, your muscle of peace. You can't always be around everybody who act right, who do right, who's nice. Oh, no, that ain't gonna happen to you get on the other side. 
So sometimes God will put you in the presence of a mean, nasty person to what? Give you some exercise. Can you love that person? Can you smile at that person? Can you not retaliate when that person is not treating you right? Will you go off and give them people a piece of your mind or will you hold your peace and trust God? Because the moment you go off, you miss opportunity to minister to that person and you miss out on a transfer of wealth that you should have had. Because sometimes a person that just treated you mean when you treat them nice and walk out of their presence, they get a chance to think that, hey, wait a minute, I was real nasty to that person. And then when you come back to talk to the person, the person is acting just as nice, person acting just as friendly, person acting just as kind. When my wife and I, we, we was in a place the other week and we checked into this particular hotel and there was a, a beautiful a Mexican uh, lady there. And so when we first went there and we were talking to her and the, the gentleman was telling about all the blessing that 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 we were going to have as we, while we we're there, they were going to take care of our room, take care of our food, take care of all that stuff. And uh, the person was standing back off cold and indifferent. Amen. And it didn't matter to me because I know I'm called to walk in the love of God, walk in the truth of God, acting all cold and unfriendly. Amen. But later on, amen, because some things weren't right in our room, we had to go back downstairs. My wife sent me back downstairs and I came back downstairs. Beautiful young lady outwardly, but her attitude wasn't right. But anyway, as I began to talk to her, she began to tell me she was from Egypt and she began to just act a whole different way. See, if we had a responded wrong. Yeah. Amen. Like we've been preaching about conversation and we had a acted wrong towards her, then there were things that she might would not have done for us if I had acted wrong toward her. So we have to make sure and understand that sometimes a person can act wrong and we get an opportunity to exercise our muscles, our muscles. How are you going to get stronger in love? How are you going to get stronger in peace if you're not around some mean, hateful, indifferent people? Even if they're in the house of God, you go there and you demonstrate compassion, demonstrate love. They, they, they. How do you think I got so strong in it? Because I deal with church people as well as the secular world. Amen. Yeah. And you got the day. They, they, they give you a good, strong up. And next thing you know, your muscles are stronger. Marcus, who shout out to Marcus Johnson. He know what I'm talking about. How does he build those muscles up? He has to get. With and lift some weights that are heavy, that are strong, that are bringing resistance against him. And sometimes people will bring resistance against you. You know, you haven't done anything to him. You haven't said it. We haven't done nothing to that lady. Hadn't said nothing to that lady. Meeting this lady for the first time in our life. Don't know her from Adam. And yet she's going to act like that. Hey, but we didn't respond. Walked in love, went on to our room. Later on, I came back down, began to talk to her, find out some things that were going on with her and everything else. Amen. And you begin to minister to her. That's what it's all about. Amen. Hallelujah. And then next time it was a, a black lady down there. It's like God just had me in, in, in that. I think God had more on my, more in mind than me just going to the hotel. God had ministry on his mind. For me to minister to a black lady, a lady from Egypt and a white lady, all three different nationalities. Maybe God trying to tell you, I'm taking you to the nations. Glory to God. I'm taking you to all different types of nationalities. I'm taking you around the world. That's why we up here on this program to preach the word to you. Let's minister to people. Let's be those wealth creators that will create the kind of life that God wants us to be. Amen. And I'm telling you. A black lady was a very beautiful young lady, and she began to do things for me that I wanted done. I said, ma'am, I need this done for me. And she was so happy. She said, oh, yes, sure, Mr. Sharp. Amen. And see, all of them, I'll give them a compliment. Say, hey, you're, you're in the right position. You're going to do good on your job. Amen. People need compliments. Compliments go a long way. Come on, type that in. I will be complimentary. 
I will be complimentary. I will give compliments, not insults, not degrading talk. I will give compliments. People don't understand. You know what people need today? A compliment. They need a compliment. You know what my daughter need? Hey, Vanika, I give you a compliment. You're a pretty young lady and you have beautiful kids and I love you. Amen. You need to give people a compliment. Shout out to all NOLCC family. Y'all are beautiful. Y'all are lovely. And I give all of y'all are just wonderful. And we love you. To everybody who tune in, we send a special shout out to y'all tonight. Again, happy birthday to Elder Marvin White. He's one year younger. <laughs> and we send out a special shout out to you. All right. Uh, don't forget, February the 4th is coming up. That's our 39th wedding anniversary. Pastor Reese and I, that's this Saturday. NOLCC, we appreciate you for thinking about us and we love you. Those of you who want to be a blessing to us, what you do is go to your cash app. Go to your cash app. Hit the dollar sign R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. Go to your cash app. Hit the dollar sign R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P-E. And send that love seed. Maybe you just want to say, Pastor, to you and your wife, happy anniversary. And of course, we would appreciate that. Also, if our ministry, I know NOLCC, many of you are going to do yours this, past, this upcoming Sunday. And we appreciate anything and everything that you do. Amen. Because we know that we are not speaking this in need of anything. We're speaking this so that you can get more and more blessings over your life. All right. Now, listen, if this is being a blessing to you, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the share button, hit the smile button, hit the thumbs up button. Hit those buttons. Don't just look at those buttons. Mash them. Hit them. Well, somebody called, <laughs> contacted me to find out why we're hitting buttons and the sad faces are coming up. I tried to get them to. Yeah, we don't understand. We, we're trying to understand that because many of you are hitting the smiling button. But when when it when it comes up, it, it goes to a, sm a sad okay, face. Uh, we don't understand that yet. We 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 work trying to work those kinks out and uh, figure that stuff out. And technology is always something going on. But at any rate, listen. If our ministry is being a blessing to you, you can write us at Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box one four six two, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code two seven eight eight six. All right, Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box. 1462 Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. Also, watch this. You can download the Vanco mobile app. Download the Vanco mobile app. You're going to see this pop up and you can type in Newness of Life Christian Center. You can type in Newness of Life Christian Center. And that way you can sow that seed of any size and we would appreciate it. Thank God for all of you who bless the ministry so we can keep taking the gospel around the world. We have 13 powerful books that you can call our office and find out about. Amen. And of course, they can bless you. One of my favorite books is entitled Spiritual Upgrade, Challenging Yourself to Improve. This is a wonderful book. That can help you out. Spiritual upgrade. And then we have a women's book called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. Amen. And I have to send that to some people. Amen. And as well as I am my brother's keeper. All right. Amen. And then we have a wonderful CD that Pastor Reese and the praise team put together. Amen. It's called Determined. This is full of powerful, joyous songs that were written by my wife. All of them were written by my wife and the music was put together. God allowed her to hear the words and hear the music. And she's also uh, has some more music. We got this somehow. Yeah, uh, some of the songs are Jesus is King. Uh, amen. We invite the glory. That's one of my favorites. We invite the glory of the Lord into this house. Amen. And uh all of these are real, real good to be a blessing to you. All right. Thank you. OK. Now, listen, if you're in need of a miracle, you know somebody in need of a miracle. Get this book called Where Are Those Miracles? Releasing the Power of God. Some of you who are in newness of life, go back over this book. Look at it. It'll bless your life. Thank you for watching tonight. Again, every Tuesday night, we're here at seven, uh, uh, 730. Every Thursday night, we're here at seven o'clock. 
And I told my wife, I don't know, I just kind of felt that we were going to go longer tonight. For some reason, didn't know all this was going to happen. But anyway, we're here every Thursday night at 7 o'clock, usually to 7.30. We try to limit it to 7.30. But tonight was different. I wanted to obey God. And now I got that off me. Now I can move forward in God. All right. Thursday night at 7 o'clock, sharp points. And every Sunday at 10 a.m., every Sunday at 10 a.m., we are back in the building praising God, worshiping God. Get on a bus, get on a train, get on a plane if you have to. These services are that dynamic. I'm telling you, go back and hear Sunday message. Sunday message called Stay on Your Toes. If you didn't hear that message, you are missing out on a rhema word from God. We're going to try our best by the Spirit of God to finish it up this upcoming Sunday part two. Now, of course, the Holy Ghost always has liberty to do whatever he wants to do through us and with us. But amen. Our plans are to do part two this Sunday. Amen. And don't forget this month is black history month. Black people. Listen at me. We have been blessed by God. We got a long way to go. A lot of things we want to see change in this country, but God has brought us from a long way. And we are grateful to have black scientists, black lawyers, black doctors, black teachers, black principals, black mechanics, black people are doing great things. And yet we have more great things to do. Thank you. All right. Now, if you can't be with us at 10 a.m. in a live service, you can watch us at 1030. At 1030, we come on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And it's going to be powerful in the name of the Lord at 1030. Amen. We normally come on unless there's something going on. The glory not hit or there's some technical difficulties. Thank you for watching tonight. Don't forget. We love you. And we know that God has the best. Don't forget Psalms 105 verse 24. Look at it. When you get up in the morning, he increases people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. Look at it. Just look at it. And then before you go to bed at night, look at it as well. All right. Thank you so much for watching tonight until Sunday morning at 10 a.m. If you're coming live and 1030, if you're watching this on Facebook, you have a blessed, blessed night.